Okay, welcome to Ta Talks. Uh, it's a special edition because today we are talking about how to play D&D at home. Um, and this is a thing we're getting asked about a lot lately and we have a lot of experience with because we play Beyond Heroes uh, from home and we have lots of other friends who use different types of software to play D&D uh, from their house but without having to have everyone in their actual living room space. Um, this is pretty common in Seattle already, just simply because of traffic. Uh, even though you live in the same city, doesn't mean that you are necessarily anywhere close to your friends, um, ge geographically and time-wise. So uh, well, joining me today is Lauren Urban, as well as our actual video producer. Uh, 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 what's your name, Will? <laughs> He's hiding. Oh, there he is. There he is, Will. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. So he he will have his his excellent sage advice as well uh, as to all this stuff. So first off, Lauren, what's the key? What's the key? How do we make this happen? <laughs> uh, you you figure out the best way for you and your group to get online, and you do it. It's it's actually really easy. You don't need that much. You can. Uh, I've been playing by post since the eighties, so. Yeah we can do this. It's, it's actually mostly how I play D and D because for quite a while, there were not a lot of people locally in my life who wanted to play. And so the only way I could find people who were willing to play was online through a lot of the other fandoms that I was a part of. So the very basics are pretty easy. It's, you need some way to communicate online and then you just need to all get together and do it. Um, I was when we started to do my podcast, we were just using Skype. That was it. We just played over Skype, we used theater of the mind. We rolled our own dice. I mean, basically we did what Beyond Heroes does, except we use Zoom. Yeah. It's, we were just using our crappy little cameras and uh, the, the microphones that are on the computer and just a headset jacked in and that's it. Because the, the barrier to entry, if you just want to play with your friends, is super low. Yeah. Once you start about start talking about streaming, that's when you want to consider things like, do you have a good mic? Do you have good sound? Do you have good video? Do you have a producer like Will who can do awesome things? But if it's just a bunch of you getting on Discord and playing like it's in your living room, that's really all you need. But we'll go into more details. Yeah, and it, it weirdly works well because you i mean you might not think that initially but i mean obviously you're probably playing with your friends so people are going to hopefully be honest about dice rolls uh <laughs> i don't know who's checking each other's dice rolls at a table in the first place yeah but uh other than excitingly like looking at a roll <laughs> yeah celebrating <laughs> together yeah, or yeah. mocking people or, or mocking a one um yeah. but because so often you you probably want to play theater of the mind. I, I typically play theater of the mind, though I am getting into miniatures. There's actually a lot of ways to use miniatures as well as the dungeon master. You could set up, set up a second camera and easily have a shot of the board and move your like whatever mini miniatures you have across the board to show where everyone is. That's totally plausible. It's something I'm actually kind of investigating right now for Beyond Heroes, using real. Um, real miniatures during the game because i just want a fog, fog machine so um <laughs> you just want to have fun with a fog machine <laughs> i just want a fog machine i mean that's that's <laughs> legit that's fine yeah legit reason uh so and as for as for second camera uh people tend to forget we we have second cameras in our lives yeah, yeah. i know a lot of people that that's when you're thinking about oh i need a webcam and then i need another cam and I need yeah. this cam. no use your phone just set up the phone and that way if you're the one who's got the battle map at home cameras most people have a modern day uh video camera on their phones that's way better than anything right we had and 10 it's years good for ago macro. And it's good exactly for macro. and it's great for streaming uh, yeah. most uh most of the video software that's going to be on there like skype like discord like zoom are going to connect to your phone really well it's going to show off things it's easy to move about and people are going to be really um forgiving because yeah. it's not a stream you know we're kind of used to seeing heads in boxes and like professional streams but when it's just you and your friends as long as they know what's going on that's the important thing so if the camera is you know shaky or if someone has to be like hey can you move this or something like that no one's gonna care 
So yeah, you've got Google Hangout. You can have a number of people in a kind of Google Hangout, though. I believe like the format, I don't think you can always see everyone at the same time so well. Um, I can't there's remember. ways there's ways of setting that up. You, so you can you, yeah, you can switch that up. Um, you and I have found not only for the live stream, but just for playing D D in the first place, we used to use V Mix and it might have had to do something with like doing the optimal video quality and that actually led to a little bit of lag yeah um and that can interrupt D a lot because number one i think i kind of feel like audio is your number one best resource for any DD, whether you're live streaming or if you're doing it just for funsies being able to understand what people are saying gets you more into the game and it's more like a podcast and and you don't necessarily need great visuals to understand someone's face uh but that said, um, we did find an issue with vMix where there was lag and that caused people to cross talk a lot. Um, that interrupted the flow of the game and the enjoyment of the game and also didn't look great on stream either. either. Uh, but we've moved to Zoom and they've got several different price points, I believe. And it's really, really great <clears throat> because you just download the software and all you do is click a link and everyone joins and that's it. You're done. You're like, it, it's, it's about as simple as it gets. And most laptops have a web camera built into them. You can get a Logitech webcam or a Microsoft webcam. Um, or I believe Razer even made one, but I don't know if they're still selling that. Uh, Logitech does seem to have like the exclusive rights to making webcams for some reason. I don't understand, but um, there's a little, You've got a lot of video options as far as that goes, but I, I have to say the thing that I've enjoyed the most is Zoom right now. So, what what are the price points on Zoom? So remember? Zoom starts off free. Uh, mm -hmm. The you can have a bunch of people in a Zoom room. You don't even have to download the software. You can use it natively through the web. There is a limit to meetings to be forty minutes or less. So if your mm. D&D game is a little longer than that, which most of us, we go a little longer than 40 minutes, you'll yeah. have to restart. So, but it's free to, to use and free is good. And then if you do want to pay for it, I believe it's $14.99 a month. And that gets you not only unlimited meetings, but it gets you a whole suite of other options. And I've been using Zoom with a couple different groups, including my podcast for a couple of years now, and it's totally worth it. But and that's free, Dungeon Drunks. Yes, Dungeon Drunks, my podcast. Hi, guys. So <laughs> that's, I, I highly recommend it. But if you're looking for the free or low cost option, you can use free. Um, you can use Skype. You can use Discord. Discord has both video and audio options. Um, I've even played over Xbox Live. Everybody who has Xbox Live has a headset. And that's how people communicate. And you get into a party chat together. There you go. You're you've got the audio that you need to play. Oh, so, that's so weird. I didn't even think about that. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've I've gone and played other games while chatting with people and then we'll we'll finish a raid in Destiny and then everybody will just sit on the dashboard or you know <laughs> there used to be like webcams that you could use with Xbox Live and we we play D and D, so there's there's a bunch of different options. Um, I also do like Discord. I think the the latency is really low, and I think the 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 sound quality is pretty good. And if you do a private chat, you can do video as well. Um, and the D and D Beyond Discord has game rooms set up that you can use that has the better audio quality. So if you're looking for really high quality audio that you don't want to pay for, come join our Discord. We've got a place for you to play. Yeah, that's a great place. I mean, this is it's a great opportunity to like find other players also. Like if you if you if you're bent on not being physically in a location with other people and playing D&D, &D, then you can absolutely you know, like going on to Discord and finding other people who are interested in the same type of adventure is like we've never had that moment in history, right? Like uh early, you know, when we were a kid when I was a kid playing D&D, &D, it was like just desperate to like either teach someone D D or get someone to run D D for you. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of a lot of dungeon dungeon masters or fr frustrated players because of that. <laughs> They're just trying to spread D D so that maybe one day they'll get to play. Um so yeah, th those are all fantastic options. Will are there, is there anything that you've noticed that's been like a hurdle um for like quality and stuff like that? Uh, no, I was just kind of commenting on what Lauren said about Zoom being good and vMix has higher video quality, but uh, more lag in, in 
that's why you get the higher video quality. Skype I've used in the past, and it's Skype. It is free, like the free options. For streaming software, same thing, like OBS is free. That's good. XSplit costs a little more money. Maybe Mix costs even more money. I wouldn't suggest that unless you needed it. But uh, yeah, like the Zoom, I can show you, like, it just it's just a, you, you know, this is what you guys see. I'm seeing the two of them on the chat. If a third person joined in, it would just, you know, add a third person to the camera. And you never know, like, their cameras look really good right now, but sometimes, you know, they, they don't always look good. But for Zoom and, you know, because they've got good cameras on their end. And it's, yeah. you know, it's pretty good. Well, yeah. once again, we've, we're set up for streaming. We're set up yeah. for a show. Um, the people that, what we're talking about are your home games in where all that really matters is that you can play and you don't have to worry about it being broadcast quality. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, and both Skype and Zoom will give you the option, like Skype, because you can have individual chats open. You can talk individually to people, and and Zoom does the same thing. Zoom's chat will let you say, "Hey, I want to talk to just my DM, or oh, I just want to, you know, talk to, to Lauren or just Todd or something like that." So there's there's some. New it is kind of nice because yeah. you're not missing the messages in Zoom. Um, you just get this little like icon. Um, like sometimes my players will ask me questions. <laughs> it's like, will I destroy the game if I do this? I'm like, of course not. How can how could you? <laughs> Which is I don't funny. know. We sometimes we we're we're cautious about that kind of thing. So you know, needlessly so because when have I not rolled with the punches? <laughs> this, is, this is very true. But we're get that's that's a that's a discussion for a different time. We're talking about how we we go about doing this. But, but yeah, yeah, having it, those it's a good way options. to communicate during the game. Um, and, and, and it's nice having everything just there. And D and D Beyond, I, you know, I, I, it's a good resource to have also on your computer while you're doing it. You got, you've got your character sheet there. You can see the monster examples if you want to look at them. I've had players that don't want to see what the monster looks like. They like them only being described, and they felt actually that uh, describing the monster outside of theater, theater of the mind, um, I mean, not describing it and just showing a picture actually kind of took them out of D&D, which I found kind of interesting. I don't react the same way, but uh, yeah, if, if you're playing theater of the mind, it doesn't take much. It's different for everybody. And certainly yeah. uh, you can also screen share with a lot of these options with Zoom, with Skype, exactly. with vMix. Um, I don't know about Discord, but screen sharing is great for, for those moments if you're using the D&D Beyond, um, the encounter builder and you're running, you know, yeah. now that we've got initiative tracker, it's sometimes helpful for your players to see the initiative order so right. that yeah. uh, they can be prepared in play and so being able to have that up if you want to share your screen if you do want to share what the monster looks like if your players want that uh you want to share your screen to show off maps instead of yeah. having the second camera somewhere if you just want to share your screen and have your battle map up there for everybody to see so you don't even have to have a second camera uh showing off uh we do have a couple of questions from the chat that are related to some of this and i do eventually want to get into like tactics for theater of the mind versus playing minis, yeah. but we're kind of talking technical right now um we have a question from yucky armadillo are there any recommended site apps to start online for those who have never played online so we've just mentioned a whole bunch of them definitely for dnd beyond come to our discord come to our forums there's a lot yeah. of people there who who are able to help there are uh virtual tabletop simulators there's roll 20 there's yeah. fantasy grounds there's a bunch of different ways out there it's going to depend on uh what's good for you and your group and how much money you want to spend and and all of that so right yeah um there's a lot of good options out there so we got puff moogie how do i do an elaborate camera setup for my battle mat through discord or other apps which we kind of talked about. Oh, uh, there's a lot of great ways. Uh, certainly you're gonna run into with like web cameras, you're gonna run into, sometimes the software will get a little confused if you have more than one going into a single computer. Uh, I have a computer where my wife and I stream. Um, I've got two webcams hooked up to the same computer and I can stream out of that okay. Um, but I, you know, what's great about those little webcams is they have a very, uh, forgiving focus <laughs> and they also are uh, uh have extremely wide angles so if you did want to show something off that's always a good option but like lauren said using your cell phone and connecting it to zoom and just lowering lowering your you can even do dramatic pans with your cell phone understand like if you want to make something super cool 
you could join the, the Zoom stream with your phone and just lower it down and you could see like the giant, you know, dragon that is sitting there and, and get kind of like an almost like cinematic like look. Um if 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 you have the patience to learn that kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, if you want to go crazy, I even have a gimbal for my phone. Um <laughs> Okay, that, wait, all right, so I gotta ask, what's the difference between a gimbal for your phone and a selfie stick? Yeah, so a selfie stick is just a cell phone on a stick, and, and, and cell phone cameras already have a lot of compensation when it comes to any kind of shake. Uh, a gimbal will make it look like it is on rails, especially a cell mm. phone. So I had a, a, a cell phone that was very video focused. It was actually really great for actually doing real shooting on. Um, they, I don't think they make it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually, uh, when I was down in Los Angeles, actually visiting uh, friends there, um, I I bought a gimbal for it, and it was fantastic. I, I ran across the beach holding it, and everything was smooth. And you could do the same thing with miniatures while connected to your Wi-Fi, and it would look super cool, actually. So um, I'm tempted to do it during this now. I'm kind of, I wish I had done it. I wish I had, like, joined with my cell phone and had, like, set everything set up. up. yeah. Yeah, but certainly like, oh yeah, I can't grab my own. <laughs> <laughs> so for yeah. if you're wondering what about the video quality at home that's happening right now is I am on a actually rather expensive production camera. It's a it's a Sony E7S Mark II. It's what I typically shoot my interviews with with Wizards of the Coast, and it's going into a Camlink 4K. And it's not we're not broadcasting 4K, but that's the only option you have. Um, and so I use a little bit higher end cameras when I'm I'm doing live streams. It's not necessary. Lauren, what are what camera are you using right now? I just have a Logitech. Oh, I've forgotten the name of it. Just a, probably, yeah. Just the basic webcam. It's the one I've had forever. It worked great. It just clips to the top of my monitor. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's actually comes with a little piece of software so that I can do some editing not editing i can i can do a little bit of of zoom and pan and and stuff so that uh you can't see say the oh are we are we are we gonna mess up our own cameras on purpose so that people oh am i no 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 i'm oh. just i'm just screwing up <laughs> no that's I'm, fine I'm, I'm listening i'm listening <laughs> i mean hey every once in a while the the nice thing about this camera is because it's it's small and it's easy to just grab a hold and move so if i ever need to just like grab it and show off something like a dice roll i can yeah uh they're, they're super cheap they're easy to use they're basically plug and play um and then once in a while i have had to use i have a laptop that i this whole thing is being run off of and uh my laptop has a pretty good camera and uh it's definitely good enough for playing D, &D online with friends i would not probably want to stream with it but yeah for for clear quality uh on my laptop it's just fine i have also a really nice microphone this is an mxl 770 but yeah. i am a professional musician by trade right. and that's why i have this um your headset cam or your headset microphone is going to be just fine it's going to work great if you want to upgrade a little bit i do recommend uh the snowballs those are usually very inexpensive and they have very yeah. good audio quality uh if you want to go a little bit better than that blue yeti does make a very nice microphone now you're talking about it like a hundred bucks so so you can go from super inexpensive to like 30 to 40 dollars for the snowball to about 100 bucks for the blue yeti and honestly that's going to be more than you need once you get up into blue yeti then then you're being serious about your audio quality for more than just playing D, &D online yeah and we have more questions unless there was more that you want to talk about no 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 the, i mean i i do like solid audio quality i'm using a road my road mic right now it's more than you need but there is something about dungeon especially for the dungeon master to really uh, to just can't hear that voice in your head um yeah it's again the most important thing whether it's live streamed or not the audio audio quality is always like the most important thing and a lot of gaming mics are perfect for it totally yep, i'm perfect. telling you that yeah. My Xbox headset would work just fine. It did yeah. for a little while too. Um, speaking of audio, we have a question from Stephen Baggett. Is there a way to share music easily? I like using ambient soundscapes and music for battles. Ooh, that's not something I typically do, but yeah, there is. Yeah, Sirenscape has ways of doing that. Um, I know Roll20 has ways of doing that. 
Um, I know a lot of the video and audio that we've talked about have ways of in inserting other uh, sound in, but I also don't use that much myself because I get distracted trying to pick music tracks. And then I only listen to the music and then I'm not playing the game. I'm going, oh, I like that part of Tchaikovsky. So I can't, <laughs> I can't, I'm not, everyone's like, you're a classical musician. You must have the best recommendations. I'm like, I do, but not for my games because I want to pay attention to what people are saying, not to what the, the New York Philharmonic is doing right now. It's a lot to ask of a DM. I am going to try something right now. And there, Ooh. I switched my camera. There you go. And so this is, this is Surter. <laughs> From from <laughs> see, and this is why you play D D online so that you can see what other people's lives are like. It's like, got, all right, what's on your desk? <laughs> got, I got my my crack kraken skull my wife gave me for Christmas. Wait, that okay, is very the, cool. the funny story behind this though, I've got my D. &D. <laughs> so the interesting thing is like I actually got two of these for Christmas because my family and my wife know me so well. <laughs> They Listen, both what's were better like, than one kraken skull two yeah and then that's that's my entire messy setup right now but anyway you so you see you have you you do have options for like showing the battlefield and you could put a webcam like right down there and then have everything you know show off your your minis and stuff like that you would want a light better than this is lit right now obviously but yeah yeah this, it's just fine if we were playing online i can see that just great yeah i'm gonna Move me back then. now. Now I know there what we're we go. gonna be <laughs> facing on Beyond Heroes on Wednesday. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, you're gonna be fighting Surger. Surprise. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, uh, voice over IP and theater of the mind is cool, but what about virtual tabletops for players who enjoy the strategic elements? Absolutely. I, I've used those on a regular basis because I have players who, when we get into more complex battles, they appreciate having at least a frame of reference. So, right. um, it's just kind of which works for you. And once again, price plans for all of them, or yeah. like Todd was just showing off. Yeah. Again, those, I think the two big ones are roll 20 fantasy grounds um i've seen kickstarters for other things that work really well um but i'm very curious about where they go with um i i yeah my current obsession is i want if if, if i'm going to do a tactical map i kind of want to do it live right now because i'm mm. weird and i want to have those like a fog effects i want to see if i can make it happen only probably mo mostly because i'm like a videographer by trade originally so um i have a slight obsession with that kind of stuff like I'm I'm curious like well, what I could do, and watching Critical Role is a great example of using cameras and making miniatures look really amazing, um, and I, I would love to find a way to emulate that for any live stream or just even personal games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I will. So they did um, a game yesterday that did the one shot in in the Doom universe, which yeah. was awesome and so much fun. And I don't know if anyone noticed, but the vast majority of the fights in that game up until the very end when Mercer put out the blueprints was right. theater of the mind. Yeah. And um, I think whichever you want to do is awesome, but I am a, uh, I do believe in theater of the mind for a bunch of different reasons. I think as a DM, it encourages you to be more flexible with what's happening on the battlefield to let awesome happen. Uh, I think it cuts down, especially online like this, it cuts down on the amount of time you spend measuring things and deciding on things. Yeah. And for me personally, it keeps my battles super fast because it encourages me to not make them complex. Yeah. Like <laughs> complex battles are awesome. And if you want to get into that, that's great. But if your focus is this is a, a, a battle that's telling a story and I don't want to go more than three rounds, then yeah. unless you're unless there are reasons to have the complexity in the battlefield do you really need the hill there do you really need there to be half cover here do you really need the you know do you need an effect to be happening all over the place yeah um i think keeping all of that in mind i think if you can't keep it all in in mind it's probably a good idea to get rid of something but that's me personally i i want super simple battlefields and um and then i'm willing to what i tell my players when i'm trying to wean them off of battle maps into theater of the mind is i say um i'm going to default to what makes sense 
and what is more fun for you. So just trust me that if you say, hey, can I get two of these guys in this wall of fire? That unless I've already described something that is totally incongruous to that, I'm going to say, yeah, sure, you can get two of them. You can go this way. Like, I'm going to help you make awesome things happen in your own mind. So I find that just makes combat super easy. And then it's fun and it's fast. And it's still just as dangerous because my monsters get all those same perks that you do. And yeah. <laughs> and then we get back to the role playing, which is what is is, in my opinion, the more fun part. Yeah. And it, it of course it's scary when your character dies and um sometimes... Why why would you bring that up, Todd? I don't why know. would you bring that up at all? Um, it's always know. scary when a character dies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess it's on my mind. Yeah. Uh, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, but like tactical combat, sometimes you know, obviously you you definitely felt like you earned your death <laughs> when you walked into like eight zombies and you're surrounded on all sides um and we're slowly torn apart. But I, I prefer theater of the mind as well. There's a couple of things to keep in mind as uh, for when you're when you're playing online as well, right? With how you do things, um, you need to give each other time to talk. It's not like sitting around a table and yelling out whatever you want to do. Um, I think there's a lot more trust that you you have to exude. Sometimes we, you, you, sometimes you can run into players that will interrupt another player. Um, that's the kind of thing you've got to watch out for. You've got to give each other time to have their moment and do their thing. Um, and um, especially if they're having like a conversation with an NPC, that kind of thing, it's, it can be very easy to interrupt somebody. And the other thing is, I would say, is presence on camera is different than presence around a table. So a soft-spoken person who is in a, like, a, a game that is you're using web cameras may find themselves kind of uh, not shouted out, but like if everyone else is being very, very verbal, vocalizing very well, it can be easy to ignore the quiet player. Whereas when you're around a table, you're very aware that someone is not talking, right? As a DM, at least you should be. Um, and so I would say the DM needs to really watch out for a player uh, getting lost in the fray of uh everyone else's role playing and possibly even being more assertive and that kind of thing that that can come up i i've seen players like shut down uh who were not necessarily that way um around a table and vice versa actually i've actually seen i've said that wrong but um i've actually had people come over to the house and play tabletop who then became quite quiet <laughs> because they became more shy so it really depends on the player and you have to keep that in mind. And that's extra good advice, especially if you are not using cameras, if you're only playing audio is to keep in mind yeah. who haven't you heard from in a while? Because it might not even be that they're being quiet. Some audio software will prioritize one stream over another. Mm. So, and that's, that's dependent on what software you're using. So it won't let all the audio through. It'll just pick one, usually the louder. So it's, it's always a good idea to, to keep an eye. If you're in the discord, it's a good idea to keep an eye on who is trying to talk. You can see their name, the little, um, the little icon next to their name light up. And so you can see, Oh wait, I got three people trying to talk, but I'm only hearing the one. Yeah. And so it might be good to call on those other two people and say, what, was there something you were trying to say? uh so yeah definitely in audio situations be be mindful of that it's something i'm even working on to the point of uh because i have a lot of screens up and i've got a lot of things to keep track of and we have a limited amount of time to get the game done um my eye is not always on everyone's cameras and in fact if my window is too small i flat i won't see their camera which happens sometimes b dave uh who is on our show and he plays freely and he will very politely hold up a finger letting me know theoretically that he would like to talk soon uh that he has something to say and i will not see him doing this um and it will then make me look like a giant jerk who is ignoring b day for no apparent reason uh so i'll i'll say that's on us too though and yeah. and not just our specific game but also any games that you're playing at home this shouldn't just be on the dm you're yeah. all getting together to play together everybody needs to and this is good whether you're in person or online but it's especially important online if you're not 
if you're only using voice, be mindful of the other people in the room with you, virtually or not. Let them play as well. Somebody might have something really brilliant to say that you're going to have a, an amazing response to. So, so yeah, that's a that's an everybody problem. Are there advantages to because I love having a microphone and I love uh, so I, I've got my my earbuds actually plugged in directly to this microphone. And that actually allows me to do some weirder voices and be more comfortable about doing them than if I had these out. Um, I also have trouble actually with enunciation sometimes when I get really jacked up and excited or I, I just can't hear my own voice actually unless I have uh, headphones in. It's just a weird thing. So it actually helps me DM to be able to do that. And I think that improves the quality of the characters sometimes as well. Yeah. And some people are just not comfy on camera, but they're totally okay on the phone. So yeah. doing a game and where you're just listening to each other, they're more likely to jump in and, uh, and be more expressive. Uh, some people only want to play in text. Like, let's not forget that you can just get into a discord game and you can play by post. That's... Yeah. We have tons of those, right? We have, oh, we, yeah. we have games on our discord right now. On our discord running. and our forums. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, come to either place. And <laughs> it, it's just like every other game. It's just, it's going to depend on uh, some people set up games in where it's all narrative focused. And so you're coming in and it's like, all right, here's my turn to talk. And now I'm going to tell a little, I'm going to write out a little scene of here's what I want to do. And here's what, what my character wants to say. And here's what my character is feeling. And the advantages of that is you, you get a chance to really think about what your character wants to do. Um, you're not having to feel like you have to be an improv master and react in the moment. You have time to think about and kind of craft your responses. And so maybe it's not as immediate, but people who um, that kind of situation makes them nervous or they just enjoy kind of a slower paced game or their lives are ridiculous and they don't have the time to spend even playing for an hour or two. This is a, a good way for people to play in, in where they can get that role playing. You can even play uh, combat. It just, it takes a little bit longer. You have to wait for your turn. But once again, if, if you and your players have come to a decision where this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it in order so that we can all play, you'd be surprised how easy it kind of is. Um, I, I, I lost like, track of what our original question was. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of like down for the, well, I'm, I'm kind of interested now in this challenge and Will's going to hate me for this uh, next game. But like, like it would be fun to show my dice rolls and it would be fun to show my miniatures on my table and what's going on um, and, and switch my own camera back and forth. So that, they, that might be something I explore and, and yeah, be curious. Um, yeah. Not, not necessarily easy, but I'm curious. <laughs> As the DM, whether you want to show your dice rolls or not is is a whole oh, always. other. Always, oh yeah, yeah. That's I, a whole other discussion. Yeah, <laughs> that's a philosophy, not a technology thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Certainly, but I mean, it adds a certain amount of drama, right? When you. <laughs> so. It. I'll say my my podcast because uh, we do use a virtual tabletop for it, and so my roles are not private. They can everyone can see my roles, uh, which does add to the drama, but also take away some of the drama. And yeah, so it, it's some um, that's something else to keep in mind. Do you want your roles to be private? Do you want if you're going to yeah. use our Discord? We have an amazing bot. Um, that's the DD Beyond Avray bot that will pull from your character sheet and do all sorts of wonderful math for you. Uh, but you kind of have to decide, do you want those to be obvious to your players? or Do you want to hide those? So that's, that's something else to keep in mind. Uh, yeah. Any more questions in chat? Oh, oh yes. So a, a bunch of people are asking about VTTs. A bunch of people want the strength and we weaknesses for them. Really, uh, in my experience, it's what works best for you. Everyone that's out there has a, uh, positives and negatives and it's it's like asking what kind of computer you like or do, do are you an apple or an uh, an android user it's well what do you prefer what's going to be in your price range uh what's the format that makes you comfortable so yeah i yeah, don't know be, if you be, use... be warned we're very theater of the mind over here so yeah That's... yeah 
Well, and people were also talking about how do you manage multiple people talking over Zoom or another software, especially if they're having conversations unrelated to the game. Oh, which, well, you yeah. got to shut that down. So th that's a conversation you have to have with players. And I've certainly had that conversation before. Like, you know, don't interrupt each other. Um, try not to showboat. And honestly, like I showboated terribly one episode and I still feel horrible to this day about it. Um, <laughs> but but like... There. Yeah, uh, if, if it's a player issue, if they're talking too much, if they're interrupting, you know, the nice way is always to send an email to everyone. <laughs> hey, everyone, I've noticed that this is happening. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm uh, saying that as a DM. I'm not saying that, like, that's what you've done. I've literally had to send that email myself. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and not everyone's going to be aware that they're doing it. Like I, I make mistakes all the time, all the time. And um, no one calls me out on it, me because they're afraid I'm going to kill the char their character, but everyone's going to make mistakes. Um, and, and so, yeah, some readjustment on the players to saying, hey, let, let some moments breathe. There was a great example, um, even in Critical Role, of letting players have their moment. And I, I'm not going to spoil anything, but several members of Critical Role, the characters, were having a conversation with an entity, and everyone got their chance, and then someone else was, and they everyone got so afraid they almost interrupted that character. And one of the other players at the table said, "No, let her do her thing." Had had that intervention not happened, we would have not had like one of the best moments in that that entire show. Because yeah, another player actually helped say, hey, let's just let this happen and see what, where it goes. And I think that's really important for the narrative. Um, and and this is a problem that is, whether you're in person or online, yeah. it just can be exacerbated by the fact that, yeah, you, you might not even know. It might be if you've got a little bit of lag, if you're playing only with audio, if, the, if something goes wrong, you might not know. I mean, we just had Will on here talking away and we were all chatting with him and had no idea that nobody else could hear any of his audio until someone told me. So, I mean, it happens. Yeah. So it could be very, a very honest mistake. Uh, another thing, I think it becomes even more important. Get off your cell phone. Uh, if your character sheet is not on your cell phone, why are on D&D &D beyond? <laughs> uh, don't check your texts. Don't check your email. Um, be there in the moment with the rest of the players. Listen when another character is talking in the game. Don't otherwise you're going to make someone have to repeat themselves. They're not going to feel like they're getting energy from you. This is like basic acting stuff. Um, you know, if if all the players are intently watching everything you say, it feels great. Um, and it makes the entire game way way better. That's even more important when you're doing uh, do playing a game online like you want to know your players are having fun with you but if i'm looking at my cell phone even as the dm because i'm just like letting time go by and i'm like thinking about what groceries i'm gonna buy later in two hours then you're not really in the game and and that's that's a problem you know yeah and it's also just easier to look like you're not in the game even when you don't mean it that's also true. You you may have like a legit like you may be actually looking up a spell, but that's something you maybe you need to keep in, in mind if it, if everyone's on camera, um, the moments to do that and when not to do that and how often. But uh, l luckily, I have a bunch of players who are like always in it <laughs> all the time, so it's it's great. We enjoy it, and and now I'm going to turn away from the camera so that I can read more questions yeah, coming yeah, in you much now over here. Break the rule. Yeah, no, I'm not breaking the rule. I'm taking your advice, which is I'm only looking when I absolutely have to. Um, we've got a question from Roger Bear. What are your thoughts on level 11 through 20 battles? Long drawn out or short big bangs? Suggestions for handling high level players? This is less about playing online and more of a general question, but uh, what, do you, I, what do you think, Todd? We haven't quite gotten up to level 11 just yet, but we've yeah, had some pretty big I'll battles. I, I'll confess, I, I slowed our level progression a, a, a down a bit because I wasn't ready to say goodbye to anyone. Because um, <laughs> when you hit level 20, that's it. Well, it doesn't have to be, but still. Um, so higher level combat gets can get quite complicated, but I think there's a difference between the quality of the villain that you're fighting and the quantity. So if you are playing um, a game online and you're worried about 11 
you know, level 11 to level 20 gameplay and that's slowing it down doesn't necessarily have to. If they're fighting one villain, that's just great, right? A really powerful villain like Vecna, things like that. But if you throw 100 skeletons, you know, literally 100 skeletons at them, that, that can be laborious at best. Um, so, so, so maybe keep in mind, I think by the time you get to the, those levels, or if you're currently in those levels, but you find yourself not being able to play a tabletop you know, around the table game right now, and you want you're you're going to have to do um, have to use the inter- internet. Um, you'll you'll feel your way out and figure it out. But for me, villains are best uh, again. Quality over quantity really helps. Um, and something with legendary resistance, <laughs> <laughs> which is always fun. So and, that's my answer. And if you do want to throw quantity, uh, I suggest taking a page from the fourth edition handbook and mm. throw minions at people. Yeah. Minions literally are, uh, they're all the same stats. They just only have one hit point. So as soon as you hit them, they, they die. So if you want to have that epic moment of the horde of zombies, make sure they all have one hit point and then maybe don't worry about the, do they get back up again afterwards? I, um, we just to keep a lot, it simple. Yeah, we played a lot of big combat scenarios where you know it's pockets of action like yeah because you're in a fight doesn't mean you're in the entire battle or the entire war um so y- y- you can isolate things and still make them epic and if you're thinking about moving from a battle map to theater of the mind but you're afraid about having those big epic battles go away because of that trust your players to ask the questions they need in order to still be effective at those higher levels because they know what they want to do and uh trust yourself to be able to keep a a vague enough map in your head you'd be surprised people are are worried that like i'm not going to be able to keep this matt mercer epic battle map in my head well no but what you can keep is basic distances and you can have a piece of paper with some numbers or you can be using the combat tracker with dnd beyond so everybody knows all right this is what we've got so it it's definitely can happen if you want that that giant horde and you want that experience you can absolutely do it it can still be just as visceral without having 20 wolves and certainly you're both having going to have a perspective on things if you're moving that way but like there was an example where i put them up against a hag like creature in a lake and i'm like uh, you know she points her finger at you like right in your face and she's like eh, eh, and, and the other character being played by jen kretschmer was like i'm actually like 120 feet away i'm like yeah it just Not anymore. floats over to you and its arm elongates and its finger all the way to your, your forehead. And that was way more upsetting mm-hmm. than getting it wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like where people were on a map. And then it provided a moment of utter creepiness because my imagination was a little bit different than Jim Kretschmer's imagination at that moment. And when you meet in the middle, you find something way more horrifying. <laughs> so that, that works out well. But I imagine battle scenes so thoroughly in my head, it's not been an issue for me, to be completely honest. I know where everyone is in my brain. So I'm pretty good about it. And yeah. then when I'm the DM, as I said before, I'm, I'm more likely to just go, all right, we'll just let that happen. I'll just mentally move this character five more feet and it, then great, you know? Yeah, it's not the most important thing until someone's like in trouble. Right. And then that, that's when you get a little bit more um, careful. <laughs> yep. And even then, if, if, at least for me, I found if I err on the side of the players when there is a question, when, when our yeah. mental maps clash and going on their side is at least going to give them a chance to survive, just go with your players. It's fine. You know, yeah. Yeah. it'll be fine. Uh, we have more questions. Oh, geez. So many of these questions are not, so we are talking specifically about playing online, but now we've got just general questions. Uh, we, we were asked, how do you deal with character deaths or the like while playing online in person? You may have a backup sheet for them. For example, I don't deal with character sheet well or the character death well. Um, man. I mean, that's, that's, that's a, yeah. that's a general uh, question. I mean, certainly if you're playing on, I'll say if you're playing online, it's just like playing in person in where everyone's going to feel differently about character death. And you just, you need to talk to your players. You need to talk to your DM and you need to figure out if it happens, what do you do next? And you talk to each other. 
Yeah, character death is never ever going to not be horribly upsetting. Um, and character death can happen in a lot of different ways. Sometimes I've actually felt like a character should die and I was okay with it, but when it happens suddenly, I like to know that um, the roles had been made and I had put myself in that situation, right? Um, and, and, and so I, I've situationally had characters die and I was like, well, yeah, that's fair. I said the wrong thing. Don't, you know, don't talk crap to a dragon. You know, <laughs> if the dragon like sticks its thorny claw right through your chest, then that is on you. Hmm. Um, but if it was in character and that's who your character was, they were going to talk crap, then that's great. That's a good death for that character. They did the right thing. Um, and, you know, sometimes the roles are just the roles as well. Um, character death sucks it does i have a character that i have kept immortal for all time only because um more because they never got to die <laughs> than anything and then they became immortal functionally because of it because so many games got ended you know over and over and over again that or and so many people needed a different class to play i kept on changing the character's class literally to help the group like we need a wizard we need a cleric we need a rogue we need a fight like whatever they need i'm like well i'll just make him that I, I, I still do it. Like I, w I was playing a game with some friends in, in, in Los Angeles, Los Angeles this year, and they need someone to be a cleric. So I'm like, okay, cool. He's a cleric now. We, <laughs> so, um, and I made it kind of the stupid thing about that character, uh, I made that they were immortal and functionally not very, uh, equipped for anything, um, became like the kind of plot device for that character. But, um, for other characters I've lost, it has always sucked absolutely yeah. I had a great chris a character named tristan don't judge me on the name um i lost him in a game a star wars game and that that sucked uh i had a great character uh in vampire the masquerade and cyberpunk and they all died and it's always a bummer but then a week or two later <laughs> or even a day later you come up with another character concept and you start learning to love again so that's my advice <laughs> I think that's good advice. We'll move on. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question from Ether Dark. My group has been playing over Discord for several years now. How would you talk to a player about their connectivity issue causing problems for the whole game? And at one point, do you say, come back when your situation is better? I feel bad about it. Yeah, this is a uniquely online situation. Um, I, th I think you, first off, you just have to talk to them about it because maybe they don't even notice. They up speed and down speed is different. They might be uh, receiving all of you great and then they're just broadcasting like shit and you need to let them know. Yeah, let them know. You need to talk to your group as well about how much it's actually detracting because just because you feel that way doesn't mean everyone else feels that way. True. Um, I have an issue that cannot be figured out right now, uh, even for our live stream, where every once in a while my video freezes and I have the fastest internet that Comcast can provide in Seattle, Washington, and is more than capable of handling a webcam feed to Zoom. Um, it could handle probably 80 at the same time by its technical specs, yet somehow my video still gets interrupted randomly as if my internet connection is unstable. My entire living is uploading 4K video, so in vast quantities and, and and it's strange that i continuously have this issue it does interrupt the gameplay we make fun of it um just like we make fun of mute okay if someone's muted like say will your video producer for some reason doesn't know they're muted when they're talking uh <laughs> you used to say that they were silence was cast on them and it's a joke you know um when i freeze it's almost always because i say the word mind flare and <laughs> it was for a while for a while every it, time my flare came legit. up everything just went it was legit three times in a row. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's always, even when it hasn't been on Mind Flare, it has always been on a dramatic moment. We're waiting for you to say something. We're like. <laughs> it's always the worst. And to the point where I'm going to start doing it, like on purpose. Um, yeah. So that's my two cents. <laughs> uh, yeah. I agree with all that. And I mean, you're only going to be able to do as much as you can do, but you definitely have to talk to them because for, as, as we said, they may not know, and there may be something they can do about it. Maybe they're on Wi-Fi and they need to be hardwired in. Maybe yeah. they need to just call their, uh, their service provider and say, Hey, I'm having these issues and have someone come out. And you know, we 
there was once we had to call for them to come out for an unrelated issue and they found out that oh yeah someone was tapping into our internet and stealing internet from us oh because wow because that's a thing you know because we also pay for incredibly fast internet because that's I, we work from home and streaming and things so uh fortunately that it hadn't caused too many problems with me but yeah someone some some awful person in this area was stealing some of our internet so definitely i i think just be honest with them because that is something that they are the only people that can fix and until they know it's a problem um and it's it's probably making a problem for them in other places like they probably are having a hard time watching youtube videos or browsing reddit or whatever else they're trying to do so it might be a problem that they want fixed yeah talk um, about to always talk about help them troubleshoot it do what yeah. you have to do yeah and if if that's still causing a problem, if you're not able to fix it right away, look at ways of reducing the amount of internet usage you need. Look at uh, if you're doing video and audio, think about playing a few games just audio. Uh, if you're doing uh, if you've got battle maps and minis and all kinds of extra cameras going on, pair back for a couple of games. See if using less will help. And, yeah. you know, maybe that's what you do until the problem can be fixed. Yeah. It's a uh, great opportunity, by the way. Once you get used to do playing D&D this way, I mean, like right now, I'm actually thinking of more and more games I can play in because there are people I want to play with that I live across the country right now. I would love to play D and D with, but I sometimes I get too wrapped up in the concept that I have to be at the same table with them. Mm -hmm. And it's I also really love the idea of playing D and D not while streaming, um, so I can just you know not think about things all the time. Because my job is literally to think about things all the time. <laughs> so being able to just think about the game um, is super exciting, and who you get to play with. Yeah. The only person that I have a limitation with, I want to play with Mark Humes, but he's in London. I'm not London, but he's in, in he's in England. Um and, and that that's that's you know I'm going to sleep when he's waking up kind of thing. So you can still make it work. I've I've you played still with people across the pond before. And yeah, 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 yeah. It's possible. That's why weekends were invented, so that you can <laughs> find those times where all right, I'll get up a little earlier and you'll stay up a little later, or vice versa. It'll it'll so work weird. out. Yeah. It's it works. Uh let's see. Uh, Tavern Fire is asking, what lighting do you use for streams? Okay, so that is a big deal because if you're looking at Lauren's uh, video right now, I, I am using a, a camera that is essentially $3,000. Um, it's very low light. Uh, I initially started using this camera only because I wanted to use, um, well, A, I was already shooting with it. Um, I'm a videographer and I wanted to use like candle light and stuff to light me and that was really fun, but I eventually got very tired of doing that every stream. <laughs> Uh, but I, I use two Elgato um, key lights right now. They're LCDs. They're on Amazon. They're really great. I don't use them directly on my face. I'm actually bouncing them off a wall right now. I think a little bit of light goes a long way. Uh, well, Lauren's camera image is amazing. Plus, she's using a background. Backgrounds can get really messy. Um, if you've got like all of your books behind you and all of your minis, that's visually very much clutter. Um, Especially D and D books are all got that red spine, so you're just like red, 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 <laughs> all the way across. I love it so much, though. I know, I know. It looks so cool. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. So, so, um, but like Lauren's image is perfect. She's got like a photo backdrop background right now. I don't know what she's using for light. I um, have a cheap little ring light I got off of Amazon. Ring it's, lights are amazing. They're but, yeah, They're, but yeah. you don't need to spend very much on it. And I think this was like 25 bucks. Yeah. And it does the thing where it gives you uh, a couple different kinds of light. And yeah. so I don't have to, because I'm a pale person. And so if you just put white light on me, I just become snow. So it's nice to have a little bit of color. Uh, I am facing a window, which when it's sunny is super nice, but I live yeah. in Seattle. And so that's... Uh, and then also the time changes. And so I might be streaming at the beginning of a stream. I got plenty of sun. And by the end of the stream, there's nothing. So I find it easier to just have a, a static light. So a, a nice thing to look for is um, the gleam in your eye. You know, if, if your eyes are reflecting the light, uh, that's always really compelling. You know, if you're watching movies, you'll notice that you almost always see a gleam in people's pupils. Um, that's super interesting. I never thought about that. And I was just watching a video the other day about uh, how to make CGI realistic characters. And they were talking about it, the exact same thing. 
that like they'll put fake light into their eyes yeah. to get that reflection because that's one of the things we cue off of that makes them look like real people with real real human emotions is light in your eyes so huh. yeah and that, and that's somewhat a cinematography issue but also like if you're facing a person in real life and you're in the presence of someone you're probably exactly positioned to see a gleam in their eye um but you can shoot them not that way um mm. so yeah so a little bit of a gleam in the eye and ring lights are pretty amazing i was using a ring light forever um and i'm not now because i just felt like getting these two different key lights to light me and even then i'm i'm hitting the wall in front of me with the light and letting it bounce back because i am very light sensitive so i have trouble with that kind of thing all right, we got one more question one more before question. we end. And this is this this is not going to be a quick question to answer, but it's important. So from Crowell, I have or I'm about to DM my first game of D D. Yay. Oh crap. Congratulations. <laughs> my players are all seasoned players. I'm worried I will spend too much time referring back to the adventure. What kind of tools do you use to prep your sessions? I just picture my desk to be full of post-it notes trying to keep the story flow. Um okay, I'll answer really quick. Uh, I, I, I have a lot of anxiety having to do with, I've been running ga the game currently now in Wild Mount. I don't know Wild Mount backwards and forwards. What's been nice is I am reading the crap out of it and sometimes I will bother the creator himself uh, <laughs> to get certain answers as to certain weird, weird things. But I recently made the choice not to watch the show where... Um, the city that we were about to go to takes place where they actually go to that city in critical role, for example. I read about the city over and over again in the book and that was enough. It is almost the, it's not the same adventure that they went on, but I can't believe how similar it was for all kinds of weird reasons. Um, everyone knows what a party gnome is, I guess, in their DNA deeply. So what I would say is write as many notes as you can read the adventure module they don't know what's in the adventure module and if they do they shouldn't be talking up make it up make it up make it up make it up if if you don't remember uh where strad's tomb is then just decide just decide where it is decide that there's an inn where there shouldn't be an inn decide that there's a room where there shouldn't be a room it's your adventure as the DM that you improv, improv will save you every time. I have this exact amount of stress when I run any official adventure. I have let myself get completely wrapped up in the adventure that was set out for me. Like Curse of Strahd, for example, um, I, became, uh, I became almost too focused on trying to get exactly right, to be honest. And that took the person I was playing with out of the game. And I realized I just need to improv this. I just need to do it. I just need the, the the structure, the skeleton of what should be. That's my answer. I'm sticking All right. to it. Hardcore, real quick. I use d, &D Beyond, Google Docs, <laughs> and the Sly Flourish Lazy Dungeon Master Prep. Um, that's basically it. I run mostly homebrew in in established worlds. So I, I tend to run on the Sword Coast and I like the Sword Coast and I like Faerun because there's a ton of information out there about it. So if I need to pull information from an official source, I can find something and then I do what Todd does and I just make up stuff as I go along. I use Google Docs to keep track of NPCs, adventures, anything that's going on. And then my my tip from Sly Flourish is you're prepped for the next game. If it's more than a page, it's too much. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I've got, I've got mine down to about a half a page. It's like what happened immediately in the last session? What are the immediate goals? What are the immediate things I need to know about the world? Um, and no, I don't really prep anything more than just here's what in general is going on in, in the sphere of influence of the characters and in general what's going on in the world. And then I can figure out what everybody's doing from there on the fly. I do everything. Um, so notepad, there's actually a notepad function on my uh, Windows machine where you have a little yellow sticky note. I write down names of characters. I write, write down plot points that need to be visited. I write down really important things like spells and what they're saved ECR, because this has come, has come up a lot recently, um, so that I know exactly how things come out. Um, because for things to be realistic sometimes, every role matters. So keeping track of those things, especially when you make a convoluted plot, say like I always do, no, um, it's important to 
stick to your stick to the rules for ma magical spells and know how long they last and all kinds of things. So nope, little bullet points will save you. Um, so that's about it. Make your own DM screen. Yeah. And finally, just do it and mess up, and it'll be okay because everybody wants to play D and D. No and one's they would gonna much. No, yeah. no one. You're gonna make a mistake, and it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be totally fine. Everyone's just gonna go, oh yeah, okay, and yeah. move on because it's a game, and everybody wants to play with each other, and that's the most important thing. And that's the most important message. So thank you so much for watching Todd Talks. I hope this was helpful at all for anyone. Um, if you would like us to do it again, let us know. And thank you so much for watching.